Hello everyone, it's Christine here and I am back for Thrifty Thursday. And just before Christmas, or probably a week out from Christmas, I think I received a package from the Sewing Lair. Um, when I buy things, I buy them over various sort of weeks and then get them to package them all in the one package and send it to me. So I couldn't even remember what was in it. So I popped it under the Christmas tree so I would have some lovely goodies to open on Christmas Day. And I thought I'd share them with you. So... And I've already got ideas for some projects, so I'll talk about those as I go through as well. This is a beautiful um, botanical print with butterflies, some of my favourite things. Let's see if we can find a selvage with the design name. No, we just have the colour the color imprint, but not the design name by the looks of it. But yeah, very decent double double sized um, piece of fabric so that will be great um, and because they're sort of individual elements you can fussy cut around them and add them easily to your your pieces even this one over here you can well you probably cut around the butterfly there cut around that butterfly and then come down and just yeah probably finish it off down down here so yeah that will be great um, or some spring stitching, possibly some Easter stitching, because I'm already thinking about Easter, seeing they put the hot cross buns in the shops. That was on the news on Boxing Day, that the hot cross buns are in the shops already, which is kind of crazy, really. Now, I love Japanese-style fabrics. I always have the little um, stop code on it on a piece of tape, so I'll take that tape off. And we'll have a look at the fabric. I'll be folding all my fabrics around my postcards and putting them in my little vertical um, filing system that I'm doing. I've got some more um, of the little drawers that I'm putting them in coming my way so I can keep going through my boxes and boxes of fabric and yeah doing that with the smaller smaller pieces like this. So, yeah this is lovely as well. Again no selvage edge to tell us the design but it's like a patchwork Japanese style so I'll definitely have a Japanese style project coming in my future. Don't know yet exactly what now these next two are May Gibbs Snuggle Pot and Cuddle Pie fabrics um, from her books. So the Northcote Society and Cerebral Palsy Alliance. So maybe they made it under under license, possibly. But it's got the yeah the little gum nut babies and the eucalyptus leaves so i think this is very very cute and i've got some larger hexagons coming from epiflex um you would have seen me using epiflex previously they make um australian brand that makes um reusable plastic templates that you can make your um english paper pieced pieces around rather than using paper um, and I love that it's yeah reusable and also recyclable at the end of life but uh, mine are just continuing to give so I've actually bought some larger size ones and I'm hoping I'll be able to do some fussy cut pieces where these little seams um, will be at the center of them and I've got a few project ideas that I'm wanting to make with these as well as possibly some little um, Easter projects as well because I think these would be quite sweet as a little Easter component. So I've got that fabric, which I love because it's got the bees on it as well. And I just love how they're yeah, hiding behind a little gumnut baby with its baby, a little bowl. It's very, very sweet fabric. And then there's this one. They're a bit chubbier in this one, actually. And this one's um I feels like it's a, a more of a linen fabric. So let's actually have a look what it says on its Sell, selvage. So this Snuggle Pot and Cuddle, cuddle Pie Narita Hansen fabric. So it's a different different maker um, of the fabric. Got May Gibbs, the author. And yeah, just just love it. Love, love, love. And there's a really decent quantity, so that's why I want to do something probably a bit more sizable than what I usually usually do or possibly some fabric to share as well and then I've got some of this I must have bought two pieces or maybe it was a, a double piece maybe it was two pieces in a single single lot 
it's just a really nice um, basic um, blue with floral designs and it's Max New Australia NH186 Harmony so yeah that'll be nice to to blend into my pieces so I'm thinking a blue and white piece might be in my and sort of silver and maybe some of my special beaded pieces continuing the Australian theme and there were two pieces that came together of this so it's got all sorts of Australian wild flowers um, swamp wattle New South Wales wedge pea WA Western Australia Sturts Desert Rose that's Northern Territory, Queensland, New South Wales, and WA. Let's just have a look at the rest. I've got the common... can't quite read what that word is. I'll have to look that one up. Looks almost like it's a, a wild orchid or something. And then we've got the acorn banksia from WA. Kangaroo paw. Sorry, let me bring it over so you can see as well. Kangaroo paw. Blue Lady Orchid, so that's definitely an orchid. Lemon Orchid, the Waratah. Got a little bit of the flowering blue gum up there. This one again, I, I'm not sure what that one is. I'll have to look that one up. Red Spider Flower or the Grevillea. Um, and the Sturt Desert Pea over here. And this one doesn't have a label, label on it. So that's on that piece, but let's see if we've got any different elements on the other other piece. Oh, yep, we do. We've got, let me just fold it out again, bird flower, red hot poker. Oops, I'm sorry, you can't see that one over there. Yeah, so that will be really nice to possibly make a little piece with Australian native um, plants and flowers. Oh, that one's actually from a previous lot. I must have just um, been looking at that before. Um, and this one is a furnishing fabric it's a woven fabric but I thought it could be fabulous for doing some Easter pieces and I'm thinking maybe some Easter eggs and possibly like an, a Fabergé sort of style egg or possibly an egg that yeah has an interior in it I haven't really thought it through but just thought these colors could be really lovely for um, some Easter decorations Oops. Sorry, I just bumped the camera. Apologies for that. Then um, a fat quarter. Again, I'll take the sticky labels off. It's a metric flat, 100% cotton. It's on the piece of card itself. I can reuse um, and yeah just got nice little bike pink bikes so I thought that could be nice with a little parasine or something or in a stick tree swaps clear for someone that's keen on on cycling then I obviously had Easter on my mind already even though I would have been buying these um, before Christmas but again even some of the elements could be even lovely for Christmas because it's got that green and the sort of burgundies or even other pieces because these are the sort of fabrics that I've talked about previously where you can cut individual elements and almost treat them like a, a ribbon but I just think these could be really lovely maybe even turned into some little hangings that go down down the wall or down the side of the, the window um, so I'll have a have a bit of a think about that. Let me see if I can find the if it has a salvage edge. Not there and not there. Oh nope, we do have one. We do. What is it? It is Rose and Hubble English Collection, manufactured by David Textiles Inc. Sold for non-commercial home use only. Other uses prohibited. So someone's obviously used a section of it um, because these are all from the sewing layer, which is a yeah, second hand 
fabric and haberdashery, but it's a great way to get um, often vintage type fabrics, ones that are out of, well out of print, not available anymore, and have unique fabrics to work with. And so I think I also had my Eastery themes in mind here, and I thought these sweet little baskets of flowers would be great for Easter or spring decorations. I think this would have been a double um, cushion cover panel. And it's by VIP Print, Cranston Print Works Co. So I'd probably use individual baskets, I think. Maybe even fussy cut around. But yeah, I'll have a think about what I want to do with, with this piece. I suppose I could make a nice little... Actually, it wouldn't be too bad to make a little um, piece to sit on the table as well, rather than a cushion. I've got plenty of cushion covers and tend to have them in more neutral tones. But maybe this would be nice as a little... Um, yeah, little table, table mat for the centre of the table on Easter. So that's a thought. And I could make two of them and I could do some lovely yeah, seed stitching, almost do it, maybe sort of patchworky style on it, or maybe even add some hexes or something around the outside, or maybe some Easter egg shapes could be even sweet. So that's a thought. And off. So most of these fabrics are around the sort of couple of dollar mark and so this is a beautiful green batik um, print. I just love, yeah, just love the swirling colours. It really sort of reminds me of the, the forest and growth and greenery and ferns. So I've got quite a few of these fabrics now. I previously didn't have many in my collection, but I'll have to think up a project for those. Um, I obviously still had Christmas on my mind at the time, um, so I'm getting a nice little stash of Christmas fabrics, but I just thought this one was super cute. All these little bird houses and the little birds, which are things that I love, so I thought they could be really nice to make some little, little Christmas decorations out of, maybe just taking little circles because you can't fussy, you could possibly fussy cut some of these out, but because they're sort of overlapping, they might be better just done as a, a circle cut out, or they could be used to, um, if you were doing bonbons, you could use these as part of the, yeah, the bonbon decoration. I'm sure I'll come up with many ideas. There were still ideas I had for other Christmassy things to do that I, um, yeah, didn't get the time for this year. Actually, let's just have a look at, this one does have a selvage edge on it, I think. In case you're wanting to see if you can track down the fabric but as I say it could be quite old fabric it's called Seasons Greetings by Fabric Quilt Incorporated patent 1033 sorry 635 yeah it's a really sweet fabric but I've got again a very decent quantity of that so I can probably even make up some little um, and again someone's Someone's cut something out of it. I'm trying to look what it might be. Sort of shaped like a snowman. <laughs> Gingerbread man. I don't know. So I put that away with my Christmas fabrics. And then we've got this one, which is a panel. Star of Hope Benetex cotton screen prints. So this would have been a whole panel. But I just thought they were really interesting little um, yeah, design elements. And just adding some of those um, into your pieces. Have a look at the central element. Is a large star design. So again, this might have been a cushion or maybe a centre of a quilt or so probably a centre of a quilt or something. Um, but I just thought, yeah, all the even if I don't use it in it in this large format, which I probably won't. Um, just having even sections of it could be really, really great. I even love the, the leaves out here. Oops, just managed to knock over my rickrack container that I was going to show you when we get to the rickrack. But yeah, just love each of these can be added to, added to pieces as well. So they do tend to have quite a few panels and things on the, the sewing wear site and often they're yeah, 10 or 20 years or more um, old. So it's a great way to get something you wouldn't otherwise get. So onto the Rick Rack, um, I picked up this blue because now I've sorted all my Rick Racks, although I have a whole lot more of this green because it was my granny's, um, sorry, my nana's. Um, 
but I've sorted the vintage rickracks I have onto these little cards which I shared in another video how I made these little cardboard cards from a free printable and I've further evolved my little storage boxes using the boxes that I picked up at the reverse art truck and using the same design which has three different designs as part of it um, to cover the box and so now these nicely sit over on the bench um, just next to me here and they're nicely um, supported because before I just had a box that was cut off around there but they were kind of flopping a little bit when they got heavy at the top. So that um, blue rickrack will be a perfect complement because I don't have any rickrack in this thickness and this um, colour. I also got myself some beautiful green fringy um, edging and that could be really fantastic to make a little like grasses or little stems for flowers if I was doing a little garden stitchery so that's what I was thinking for that. Then I've got this lovely, um, I guess it's a braid, 3.4 metres. And yeah, I think this would be great to tea dye some of these really um, shinier fabrics. Just tea dye up beautifully. They take on a really almost metallic, warm um, colour from the tea dyeing. So I'll definitely give that a go. This one's already in a nice natural color and again just a, a great little braid to have to add little pieces of this to your slow stitch projects. I'll leave these down here so you can still see them. Um, probably didn't need any more lace but when I see interesting designs in interesting colors I tend to just pick it up if it's a small quantity. Again these are just um, usually bundled together at like $2 or something like that for those. Also pink, picked up some apricot ones whether I will keep them all in the apricot or maybe tea dye some of those as well. This one's really sweet and it's a lovely big quantity of it. Let me just crack it out. So it's a really gorgeous little braided, um, sorry, woven ribbon with a lace either side of it. So I thought that's very sweet with these little flowers and little turquoisey coloured leaves and as I say that's a very very decent decent quantity sometimes that woven braid can be quite expensive and this one's another braid but almost like a like a rickrack let's just open it out because I'll be putting these on their little cards anyway I'll leave the tape because sometimes the tape is stopping it unraveling at the end but yeah I thought that's a really interesting little little braid so yeah, like a rickrack at either side and then it's got a woven woven little elements in the centre. And again, a very, very decent quantity of that. And then another really interesting braid, I guess. Almost like a, yeah, a woven lace with these little floral um, elements. And again, you can just really use one by itself as a little addition to your your stitcheries or you could use it as the, the full braid and then because I'm still doing work and planning to continue doing work on my burgundy bonheur um, treasure hunt piece which has become a real family um, blanket with what's still to be added and stitched on um, I got some more of this um, well not some more I got some more trim in a burgundy color I don't have anything like this in my collection because it's got a lovely little almost like a crochet edging on it and then it's on a a meshy type um, ribbon or um, meshy type fa fabric I guess. This one will probably end up mostly in my Christmas box I think but I'll keep some of it out on a card here as well because who knows when I might need it but yeah I thought that would be great for edging even when I was doing the things like my little drums this would have been great for that. So again a huge huge decent quantity of that. And then picked up some little buttons. These are just little hexagon ones, but I thought they could be quite cute to go when I'm doing my hexagon um, English paper piecing projects. These sweet little roses. Again, they've got a little shank on them, but my little trick is to sit those within a um, Suffolk puff or yo-yo, um, and it just sort of holds them stable. And then there were three of these grouped together um, which are beautiful handmade shell buttons, really fine. So I think they're going to be lovely. 
So yeah, that was uh, my little stash from before Christmas that I got under the Christmas tree from the Sewing Wear online op shop. So I hope you enjoyed having a look at that. I'm looking forward to now um, getting back and filming the next segment of my perpetual calendar and finishing off January and also sharing a couple of fun other additional ideas I have to go along with that. So stay tuned for that video too. Thanks so much everyone. I hope you're having a great day or a great evening. Take care of yourselves. Bye.